Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm starting something new with my channel and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a podcast going. So today is our first one, so be nice to us. Uh, we have another member, that, another person on our panel that's going to come and join us. He's busy training someone, uh, but he'll come in later on. Firstly, for those who are new uh, to seeing me on camera and seeing the man beside me, we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Jason Harris. My background, I uh, started in combat when I was like 11 years old, so I've been doing that for about 35 years. But apart from that, I've got an interest in, very much in, um, along with the CrossFit style, was uh, general physical preparedness, which means I like doing a bit of everything. I like boxing, kickboxing, I like lifting, I like riding bikes, I like swimming. I like learning new things. I like covering nutrition. I'm a bit of a holistic sort of trainer. I don't specialize in anything, but I'm looking to learn off other people. And the man I'm looking to learn off is a man beside me who will introduce himself, tell you who he is, and then we're gonna have a chat. Alrighty, um, my name's Luke Holmes. I'm a trainer here at Inspire Pure Fitness. Um, I've been in Kuwait for coming up to four years now. Um, my speciality is in CrossFit. I've been involved in CrossFit and training CrossFit for just over six years. I started off um, CrossFit Leeds back in the UK when I was at university. I was essentially just a rugby player looking for something to sort of develop my performance. Did CrossFit, did my first competition within a couple of weeks. It was a local competition, really enjoyed it and then just got hooked and caught the bug. Um, and then once I graduated, I moved out to QA because I saw a full-time coaching opportunity, which is rare um, as a CrossFit coach. So I took that and then I've been at Inspire for the last uh, year and a couple of months, just working as a strength and conditioning coach, doing a little bit more individual work, uh, less, less coaching of CrossFit, but still coaching CrossFit as well. Um, my specialities are within CrossFit itself, Olympic weightlifting, strength training for CrossFit and programming as well. Um, I run my own programming uh, company called Iron Discipline and what I do is I work with athletes remotely and also in-house athletes here at Inspire, trying to develop their performance. We work through online training programs, we work through individualized uh, training programs. So what we try and do is offer something for everyone um, with a real emphasis on sort of hard work basics, trying to develop a good base of support for, you know, to, you know, training with intensity off the bat, um, and you know, it's I, I really enjoy this this idea about the podcast because Jason and I have countless conversations at work where we're talking about you know concepts within training, nutrition, etc. And certain things that we see, we have rants with each other, and yeah. I think this this is a, sort of a good opportunity to get our ideas out there and you know like we were yeah. saying it, sometimes it just takes a bit of explaining something um, and you end up learning from yourself from that um, through just just chatting about things yeah so yeah I think that something from this is also sharing our knowledge but as well as that you know sort of trying to see how much knowledge do you know we have and trying to learn yeah from yeah ourselves. like Luke and I've sort of only met I've only been here a couple of months but I think lately we've just realized probably on similar we have a lot of similar ideas and and, and uh, theories and what we're on training and one of them is that simplistic trial not simplest but keeping it simple okay keeping it simple so not over complicating things There's something we joked about this morning is uh, Luke's put me on to a, a person I'm really interested in watching uh, Julian Pino yeah, you know yeah. um, and uh, something that resonated me, with me, what he said was about when someone describes the glute, glute and they've got to name all six muscles, and he's like, it's the glute, it's your butt. And that resonated with me. In other words, keeping it simple. Uh, personally, I feel people overcomplicate training, um, and it ends up, it's a bit like overcomplicating your diet. People do it for a certain time, and then it becomes just too hard, counting all this stuff and measuring, and they just fall off the wagon and go yeah. back. And I find that similar when it comes to training. You know, you'd know what it's like. People come to you and say, I'm going to train six days a week. I'm going to do this four hours a day. And you go, ha, ha, slow down. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I have experience to tell you that you wait. You'll last a month and it'll fall off. Let's simplify it. Let's keep it a sustainable style of training that you can do for a long time. Same with your diet. Before we go on, we have a man that's going to be in the next podcast. He's going to say hello. This is Milos. Hello, guys. Uh, My name is Milos. <laughs> Uh, he's got a quick Sorry minute. Me. While you're here, could we introduce yourself? Just quickly introduce yourself to camera, the people who are watching. Have a quick rundown on your background, where you're from, and what you love doing. Uh, my name is Milos. I'm from Serbia. I'm almost, I mean, three, three years in Kuwait. My background was uh, 12 years handball. 
12 years handball. Yes. And we joked about it in the Olympics. I said, handball, that's not a sport. And he said, <laughs> and no, he said in, no, in Australia. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, so five years in fitness and uh, two years in CrossFit. Sorry, guys, now I have PT. So see you later. You'll see more of this man in the other podcasts. Hey! <laughs> so just give you a quick rundown, too, before we get back to the topic. This podcast, we're going to cover a lot of topics. We want to keep it casual, we want to keep it fun. But I think Luke and I have realized we both enjoy talking about it. And I just, yeah, what, how big an audience we get, we don't know. But I just enjoy sharing knowledge I have in my background. I've got a big background in this. I believe in the mind. I like training this. And I believe I can make better athletes by making stronger minds and people. Yeah. I'm not particularly specialized in certain areas, but I like developing strong characters. Okay, so back to our topic. We're talking about the Julian, keeping it simple and keeping it real. <laughs> on the topic of strongman and he's the man we talk about luke's put me on to him so he's much more um knowledgeable a strongman than i am i'm learning about it and i'm very keen and excited to learn for the reason that the age i'm out at 44 is i'm finding it hard on the body doing some other things this they're good with the crossfit and the lifting but i'm i'm getting sore not because of crossfit because i'm 44 i've been doing a lot of jiu-jitsu i've been fighting a lot and i've got joints that ache and i've got things that struggle but I find with the strongman trainer, I did a session this morning with just carrying something, lifting something up and dragging something. I don't get the soreness and we were talking about yeah. that, yeah? Yeah, so, um, you know, with the strongman side of training, like I was saying to you, yeah, and Julian puts it a lot better in the podcast is on um, the, the sort of low eccentrics of that. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily, it doesn't make you sore. It, there's sort of less of a soft tissue Break, so break yeah, down. tell us what. Give the guys an idea of why so say for we instance, don't get a sore. So say for instance, you're going to do a 20 rep max back squat. Um, with that, you have the eccentric, which is the lowering, and you have the concentric. Now, the eccentric is what breaks down the muscle, um, and it, you know a little bit of bro science. I'm simplifying it quite a bit, um, and that's also what makes people sore. So if you do a 20 rep max squat, the likelihood is that, like for the following days you're going to be limping, you're going to be walking like a penguin. Um, but say for instance, you're going to do some sled sprints. You could probably instill just as much intensity and instill just as much, um, just as much fatigue through, through yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. not be as beat up from it. So, you know, if you heard a concept, uh, well, not concept, but think Prowler Flu. Um, when I first got into sort of this type of training, I was a big follower of Joe DeFranco, and he, was, he would put his athletes on the Prowler all the time. Um, you know, American football players and field athletes in the US. And he, he, would, he would make videos of people just walking around like this. And it was called the Prowler Flu. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, it's something that I feel that is a really useful tool in building, you know, I think mental toughness. When I first started CrossFit, yeah. I used to love using it. And then I went through about a period of time where, you know, I, I was focused on the details of training and everything. And then I lost interest in it. I yeah. was focused on tempo, I was focused on, um, you know, variation. Yeah, we were talking about that, saying there's so many things to do and yeah, yeah. it gets hard to be good at all these things and it's really difficult to keep focused on that. Yeah. Um, I, well, I just want to touch on a point you said there about um, uh, like the soreness and recovery. What I found interesting is I thought I did a relatively hard session this morning and because my recovery is good, I finished. I almost questioned if I trained hard enough. But then I thought back, I thought, hang on, when I was doing that 800 meter walk and I was doing those dead ball lifts and I was yeah, doing that drag, like shit, I was exhausted, right? yeah, I felt yeah. like shit. Yeah. Yeah. But afterwards I wasn't sore, so yeah. I'm new to it. So I actually went, hang on, did I train hard enough? But then I went back and worked out what I did and I went, you've done enough. So I gotta be obviously probably careful not to overtrain in it. No, yeah, definitely. I think that there is, uh, there is that element of when you do finish, you're not as, as fatigued as if you've done yeah, like yeah. a high rep. Uh, you know, sort of CrossFit style workout that just leaves you, you know, puts yourself into a hole. Yep. Um, so there is that element of it, but at the same time, you know, you can, you, know, you can easily make yourself puke oh. like from pushing a prowler as yeah, as I'm, as you can because I'm it. learning. I'm sort of holding back a little bit, I suppose, no, yeah, and learn yeah, my yeah. limits. But yeah. yeah, and we're talking about grip strength. We've got a challenge in the club right now, which is uh, just a dead hang on the bar. And Milos, who you just met. Uh, there's another person who did longer, but he did a little bit incorrect. He'll redo it. But Milos, for the size he is, two minutes 15 hanging on that bar. Little guy like me, minute 15. But the point of the story is he's been doing some strongman, and he said his grip, since you got him doing it, has improved out of sight. And he shot me. He's a big, what does he weigh? What's he weigh? He's, 
he's actually 99 kilos right yeah, now. So he's yeah. only 100 kilos and he hung off a bar in a dead hang for two minutes 15. So there's a challenge for anyone out there. If you think you've got a strong grip, try and do a dead hang. No powder, no tape on the bar, one hang, feet can't touch a floor, beat two minutes 15, let us know if you do it. Um, yeah, so back to your the training. Yeah, so, the, so with Milos, uh, uh, I coach Milos, um, he, he is a CrossFit competitor, but a lot of, say for instance, his upper body accessory work has been based around uh, this type of training. So, yeah. you know, and I, I, what I've done recently is I've been changing it up, and as opposed to going through movements like a bent over row and a single arm row, which do have its uses, I've made making them do yeah. these, these these rope pulls because I, I think the grip strength is a huge factor in CrossFit. And say for instance, sixteen point three is a perfect example of that with the power snatches and bar muscle ups. So you've got like two fairly, say, simple movements for the advanced CrossFit, but then you know you're putting them together and you're putting it for ten minutes. It's pull, pull, pull. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it, you know you have this. You'd say some people would look at that and say that's a stupid workout, but it's what has been presented so you've got to do it and yeah. I think that um, if you look at some CrossFit workouts like JT for instance which is handstand push-ups ring dips and uh, push-ups you know that's push 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 sometimes they just throw these just these these crazy workouts out at you that just ruin one part of your body or one move one type of movement yeah. um, so I think grip strength is a huge factor in that especially high rep gymnastics work and I think I think the funny thing you know people say a workout stupid it usually means that's their weakness. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, found yeah, that's yeah, usually yeah. the reason. Yeah. But yeah, that's dumb, I don't want to do that. That's usually their weakest thing they don't like yeah. doing, from a bit of experience I've seen. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. Like, that's, that workout is stupid. It's always the one yeah. I do. I'll do the, yeah, it's a bit like that. Stuff, but look, but yeah. yeah, so uh, certainly myself, I'm going to keep up with this strong man. I'm going to learn more about it and what we're doing is encouraging, what we're more or less doing is encouraging you guys to look outside the box. You know, don't just be uh, one track. It's going to, you'd agree, it's going to complement your CrossFit, yeah? Oh, yeah, completely. I, yeah. Just, I think that everyone is in such a rush now to make sure that the, the, their performance has been directly benefited from what they're doing every day in the gym. So everything has to be completely specific to the workout, yeah, completely yeah. specific to the training cycle, yeah. whatever. And um, I think that, you know, one thing that I've sort of been thinking about big time over the last year and I've experienced a lot more over the last six months when I've changed up my training I focused less on you know what I was doing before and a lot more and just trying to build a base trying to build a, a good uh, a good support structure for training volume because um, it'd be a good crossover wouldn't it I think yeah completely. what I'm right in saying like people go so say you're doing your grip strength and they think oh, I haven't done a pull-up for a long time but you might be surprised how much that rope pull, drag, gripping and pulling, of course, suddenly of course, you do pull-ups yeah. and you go, well, my pull-ups have improved, but I think yeah. a lot of people don't realise that there is a crossover. They think there if is, I'm not doing pull-ups, yeah. I'm not going to get better. No, yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think that's important to realise that you don't always need to just specifically do a pull-up or a deadlift. The thing I noticed, I mean, a lot of you guys have maybe done this before, but me, with uh, like a, a, having a dead ball in front of me doing squats, well, I found that a burner on my back it pulled me forward. And I like that. I like that it worked my back muscles. And we were talking this morning that I think people are going to distinguish the difference between fatigue in their muscles and injury. Yeah, completely. Yeah. I, think, I think there's, uh, there's you know, everyone sort of experienced the way you get like a low, uh, you got like a low back in the erectors. You get a bit of a pump yeah. in that area. And I think a lot of people, you know, they, they they find it hard to disassociate that pump with you know actual back pain. That's, yeah. You know caused by an injury or whatever um, people were very very quick to um, jump to a this hurts I need to stop it straight away um, but they question the training too yeah, much yeah 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 and I think that there is obviously elements where if you're gonna be doing back extensions followed by kettlebell swings followed by yeah. rowing followed by deadlifts whatever you're gonna get a sore back and it's probably not the smartest thing to do yeah. but you know if you do so if you do certain things and you know it's a, a certain area of the body for really firing up usually means that there's a weakness in that area um, yeah, and yeah. The, you know and, and one of the things uh, one of the things I try to do with my training is you know say for instance you're a competitive, a competitive athlete it's okay well as soon as you're finished with competition after a bit of downtime is you've got to imagine like like this cup here like this is an analogy my old coach gave me. So say for instance, you're this cup. Um, say I'm full up at the moment. And I want to turn that cup that's full into a one liter cup. 
what I've got to do is I've got to build the cup first. And that's yep. done through training, yep. different things that help it. And then once you're closer to your competition, that's when you fill the cup with water or your coffee, whatever it is, and then you become a you, you become your performance is, is raised because of that. Yeah, funny thing is I think it crosses over everything. I think about the combat. I mean, yeah. I've trained I've trained world champions in fighting and. It's the same base, you know, work on stance, work on keeping your hands up, work on getting that good foundation, that solid base, before you add in all your technique, your combinations, everything, because if you haven't got that strong foundation to fall back on, you're gonna get in trouble. So I think it probably crosses over to a lot of sports using that analogy. I think, I think you know, it, you know it's, it's, um, it's a sort of go-to in like, you know, sort of strength and conditioning world. Yep. I, you hear about people and they say that it's, you know, when you're, when you're in the off season or when you're away from competition, you got to do things that aren't like okay, like say for instance, someone's fighting. When do they spar? Like how how close to a competition? Uh, they spar? Uh, if I'm sparring, I wouldn't let my fighters spar probably two weeks out from my competition. So like you got two weeks out. Yeah. If they're, if they're eight weeks out from the competition, they do sparring. Eight weeks, eight weeks out, we'll spar, but then tapering in, we won't spar. Okay, so we're like say for instance, someone is doesn't have a fight planned, yep. and they're, they're in, in in what you call like an off season. Yeah. Would they, would they spar as much? Uh, or would they be focusing on technique? I would be working on skills. Yeah. I'll be working on, you break it down individual, like Jiu Jitsu, work on your boxing. And and again, fighting's like that. A lot of people come into the gym and they'll see a wrestling class on. Because wrestling's their weakness, they'll walk around it and go and kickbox. And it reminds me of training here. People can't do a pull up, so they just don't do pull ups. They like cherry pick their wads. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when we're not fighting, your point's exactly right. We'd work on their weaknesses, work on your Jiu Jitsu individually. Coming into a fight eight weeks out, you're sparring more, putting it all together, seeing yeah. how your training's making gone, it specific. making it specific, putting it back together. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just again, what was your um, training program? What was your site? Where do they so, find you? Um, on Instagram, it's iron.discipline. Um, and you can see daily workouts put up there for the beginner to intermediate level athlete. Um, I do offer an online training group where that's what uh, I believe is sort of the best expression of training for competitive CrossFit and then I work with people on an individual basis uh, but that's limited to the amount of people I do and that's for a lot more specific um, where we'll go through testing phases and I'll support people on nutrition etc but the main thing is is with the online training program it's not like um, I see a lot of training programs out there there's not necessarily the coaching support with it but I try to include as much coach support as I can through a, a, an online feed where we put feedback in, we talk about the training, uh, I'll give people answers to questions they have, etc. Even if someone has videos and they send them to me uh, by email, then I'm never going to be turning them away. I'll always have a look at their videos, uh, just have a look at lifting and things cool. like that as well. well. I'll put the links um, down below. Yeah. But you can find us uh, at Inspire. Uh, Pure Fitness in uh, Sahara and Kuwait. Uh, for those who are watching this, come and say hello. We've got other great trainers here, but Mila should be part of the crew. We're gonna try and do this once a week and uh, cover different topics. If anyone's got any things you want us to talk about, send me a message on um, the channel in the comments and we'll try and get around to it. We're gonna cover different topics. We're gonna try and keep it fun, keep it informative, keep it relaxed and just educate you guys, educate us. Maybe you've got something to uh, teach us and tell us um, and hopefully you can learn from it. We enjoy doing it. Thank you for watching this first short one. Uh, we'll probably end up probably talking for a half hour, 45 minutes sometimes. Today was a bit quicker. The guys are busy, got to train. But uh, first one down. Thank you, Luke. First one down, mate. It was a pleasure. Awesome. I enjoyed doing Thank it. And we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. See ya.